Hello and welcome to this session on SOAP UI beginner tutorial and today we are going to see the different options of running a test case in SOAP UI. So we are going to see how to run a test case from the GUI of SOAP UI. We will also learn how to run a test case from Groovy scripting and then we will see how to run a test case from command line. Towards the end of this session we will also look at some useful tips. So let's get started and let me open my SOAP UI. So the SOAP UI is up and running. I will just close this starter page. So this is the project that we have been working on in our earlier sessions. And in case you have not followed the earlier session, do not worry. I'll be telling you exactly what we do to run a test case. So for example, I will go to any of our existing test case. Uh, let me go to test suite 3 and let me go to test case 2 and you can see in test case 2 we have some steps so inside a test case you can have multiple steps so here I have one API step and one Groovy step so the first thing is how to run from the GUI of SOAP UI so you go to the test case open this test case window by double clicking the test case and here you have the options for running the test case you have the options to stop the test case you also have the option to loop test case continuously so in case you enable this option and then run your test case it will keep on running in a loop and then there are some other options as well so if I try to run it let me hit this green play button and you can see it ran the API request and the groovy script and here below you get the test case logs where you see all the steps that got executed and then the time that it took for execution also here we have this icon for setting the options if you click here you can actually set the socket timeout abort test if an error occurs and some other options as of now I will just cancel this or close this window and here you have seen our test case did not complete the first request failed and then after that it did not go to the second request and you can see it in the log as well we have just a single step which is get country ISO code getting executed and we did not execute call hello which is a groovy script so that is because we have set abort test if error occurs if you uncheck this and say ok and I will run it again and now you can see even if the step failed it went to the second step and it executed the other step as well let me go back and look at why this is failing in the earlier sessions it was not fetching the results so we have created an assertion let me update this assertion I want it as IN so this is a API call where we give the country name and it gives back the country ISO code so now this should pass and let me run this again and now you can see everything is okay and therefore we see a green status here so inside a test case if all the steps pass we see everything as green here otherwise we see it as a red status which is for failure so this was very quick and very easy how to you run a test case from the GUI of SOAP UI now let us see the interesting part of how do you run it from a groovy script so for that what I'm going to do is I will create a new test case inside this test suite 3 so I will do a right click and I will say new test case and here I will give it name as test case 4 and say ok so this is my test case 4 here inside this test case 4 I will just add a step for groovy script and I will name this groovy script as run test case and say ok and here we have the editor for this particular groovy script step now I have added some notes so here first we have to get the name of the test case that we want to run so this is the code for it and do not worry I will provide all these notes in the description of this video so you can look at it in the description as well so this is the code for getting the test case name which is testrunner.testcase.testsuite.testcases and then the test case name. So here let me say test case is test case 2. So we want to run test case 2 here 
and you can also run the same test case which is test case 4 however if you do that if you are having a groovy script to run the same test case inside which the groovy script is existing then it will run on continuously in a loop right so therefore we are uh, giving it some other test case however it can run the same test case as well but we do not want to do that otherwise it will go in a continuous loop so this is the statement to get the test case and then we will run the test case by this option this is the code for running the test case now here you can see we have we say t case which is the variable where we have stored our test case and then we say dot run and then we have these two things first one is the property so I can also delete it from here and actually create a variable by the name property and give it here and here I can just say this variable prop and then there this is for asynchronous run true or false so I can make it as true or false and then I can run this I will just expand test case 2 as well so that you can see it running and here if I run this groovy script you can see it ran test case 2 okay and the status is okay I can also make it the property as null and I can make it as false and run it again and you can see it ran this test case again in case you want to log out the result you can also say log.info and I will just take this runner and from the runner I will extract the status by the function get status and then I will convert it to string and let me run it again and you can see the status here it is printing is finished so our test case is running properly now one of the useful tips is how to get the list of all test cases in a test suite so here is a small code for that I will add it here and this is a code by which we can get the list of all the test cases in a test suite and then based on the name you can run a test case so we are saying context dot test cases dot test suite dot get test case list and then I am running a loop test cases dot each so we have got all the test cases inside a te inside our test suite into this test cases variable and then I am saying test cases dot each and logging the name of the test case okay so I can just do it like this so I get the logs properly and I will run this again and you can see it has given me the name of all the test cases inside the test suite and then if you want to do some action based on the name for example I want to say if it.name equals equals let's say test case 3 then I want to do something so for now I am just running a log command where I am saying this is test case 3 and let me clear the console and run it again and you can see when it came to test case 3 it printed this is test case 3 so in case I just want to run a particular test case inside a test suite I can have this command here to run the test case and so we can also loop through all the test cases inside the test suite also the other useful tip is uh, get the test case name so if you just want to print out the test case name you can just use this command so for example I will just say log.info I will say test case name is and this command testrunner.testcase.name and let me go to the logs and clear it and run it again so you can see it prints the test case name is test case 4 so whatever current test case we are into it will print that name so this can also be handy and helpful in some situations now let us come to our option of running from command line and for that what you have to do is for example I want to run test case 2 from command line what I will do is I will right click and go to launch test runner 
here and here we have some properties so in case you have some password you want to enable ui uh, you can set it here and of course you can select the test suite and test case as of now it is already selected if you want to have some environment variables or override some existing values these are the reporting options any properties if this test case is using and any custom arguments so for now let us keep everything as by default and click on launch and it will start running this test case and do not worry about these warnings or errors as of now i will say ok and go back to the top and here we get the command so you see here first we have to go to this location of soap ui bin i will copy this from here and add it to my notes here and then we have this command which actually runs our test case so i will again copy this and go to my notes and paste it here okay so if you see the command it says test runner dot pad minus s and the test suite name so minus s is the option for giving test suite name and then minus c the test case name and then the location of our project okay so first we have to cd to this location of soap ui bin so i will open my command prompt now and paste it cd to the bin folder of soap ui and then run this command so i'll again copy this and paste it here and run it and again do not worry about these warnings what we are interested is in to see if this ran properly so let us come up and yes our test case is running properly you can see it has this particular soap request get country iso code and it ran it properly and you can see the request and the response here so here it is saying finish running soap ui test case test case 2 and time taken was 537 milliseconds and so we are able to run our test case from command line as well so whenever you want to see whether you can run a particular element from command line you can always do a right click and look for this launch test runner option so as i have discussed in our last session you do not get the test runner option at the step level you get it at the test case level and then at the test suite level as well and of course you can also get this at the project level as well so this is how we can run our test case from GUI, from Groovy Script, and from Command Line. I hope this session was very useful for you. I will meet you in the next episode of Soap UI. Thank you for watching.